Mr. Clean right now on our way to drop it off to get wrapped. Welcome back to another video here on London Crowd. The sunlight is kind of in my face a little bit, but hopefully you can see me all right. We're on our way right now to go get this truck wrapped, and I'm super stoked about this because we have never done this before ever on this channel. It's not that I don't like wraps or I think there's anything wrong with them. We've just never really considered it that deeply. I know Reagan considered wrapping her truck rose gold at one point, but that was a thought and it never happened. This is the first time ever we're gonna be wrapping a truck on the channel. Take your guesses in the comments below what color do you think we're going with on this. I don't think anybody's gonna get it and if you already know what the color is because you happen to be somebody that asked me about it or messaged me directly, please do not spoil it for everybody in the comment section below. Just let everybody wonder what it's gonna be and guess away. Unfortunately, you will not see the wrap reveal in this video. However, you might be seeing it in a video or two from this one. So stay tuned, turn on those post notifications and get ready because this thing is going to look so sick. So I did just drop off Mr. Clean and uh, they showed me the color in person because I hadn't seen it in person yet. I've only seen it online. Checked it out and I gotta tell you, it's gonna be wild. You guys are gonna have to wait and see what happens and for the reveal of it in a couple of videos from now, but it's gonna be pretty nuts. We got the truck picked up, but man, is it freaking dirty. Pretty sure he said that he has not washed this thing since September and it is now January. So yeah. We got a work cut out for us. Let's do it. Yeah, I'm not the type to take no for an answer. I don't deal with people that are like a cancer. No one said I hang with the people that enhance ya. And I'm not the type to give out second chances. I just wanna work on my own for myself. I don't need no help, not anybody else. Nah, man, I got it dealt. I'm working on my wealth and I'm working on my health. Keep on working to excel, cause I'm working on myself. Yeah, and y'all don't know that I'm a soldier. I always felt like I'm a loner. When everybody thinks they know ya And y'all don't even know I don't ya And now I'm ready taking over Cause every day I'm getting closer Just look at everything I'll show ya And now I'm ready, I'm a blow up. Here are the new tires on the King Ranch. You guys have seen the Nittos on there for quite some time. I'm actually gonna show you the Nittos before we get into the Toyos too much. So here are the Nitto Terra Grapplers. They were on that thing for, we're guessing between 55 and 65,000 miles. We don't remember the exact mileage they were put on. He knows for a fact that he got the lift, delete, and wheels and tires all around the same time, which was give or take 60 to 70,000 miles, and the truck's got about 130 on it right now. So give or take, uh, 55 to 65,000 miles on these things, and that's pretty stinking impressive. So, the tread, I mean, it's it's dang near bald. You might as well just call them bald um, on that one. This one, I mean, it's a little better. This one's a little better, and then this one's a lot better. And so, I don't know which one was on which part of the truck, but you can look at your tire wear and usually figure some stuff out about it in terms of what front end parts or wheel bearings or etc might be going wrong if you don't rotate them much because you can tell by tire wear if there's something wrong with your suspension alignment or anything else like that i do know that not too long ago though he had the front tie rod ends replaced on this thing so that could have had something to do with the uneven wear on two of them these are the tires that he decided to go with they're toyo open country at2s i actually ran this set of tires almost the exact same size except it was an 18 inch wheel not a 20 inch but it was a 35 by 12 and a half and it was on in 18 it was for an old chevy pickup that i used to own that was my first pickup truck and uh, i loved them i didn't have very many miles on mine by the time i sold the truck i only had maybe I don't know, 5,000 miles on them, but I really liked them. And uh, we've had some friends of ours that have ran these exact tires on their trucks and they are usually pretty rough on tires. They don't usually last too long, but they were actually blown away at how long the tires lasted and they know they don't make tires last very long. So we just heard a lot of good things about them. And as much as my dad off-roads, which is 
very, 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 very rarely, and it's nothing extreme by any means. He just didn't see the point in going with a mud terrain again as much as he liked the look. It just really wasn't that practical for 99% road driving. Uh, so yeah, these are hopefully gonna wear even better and last even longer. Not that 55 to 65,000 miles is bad the way he drives. As much as he's gonna be using it off-road, this was just a better set because it's still gonna give him uh, more traction if he needs it. It still looks aggressive because the Toyo AT has a really nice aggressive sidewall that has a lot of detail to it. Uh, so it still gives him that aggressive look, but it's just a little more practical for highway miles. But that's the look, that's the new setup on the truck. Looks pretty sweet. Definitely looks good. Welcome to the final segment. We're gonna be doing a hopefully short Q&A. We're gonna go through some questions. I made a post on my Instagram about 24 hours ago. I said, hey, drop some of your best questions down in the comment section below, and hopefully we can answer them in the next segment here on YouTube. And if you do not follow me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram here at Loud and Proud Diesel Trucks. Use this opportunity to tell you that we do not DM you on Instagram telling you you won prizes. We never ask for any money from you if you win. We never tell you to get prepaid cards or to send us money to pay your registration fees or taxes or anything like that so if you get any messages calls or anything like that requesting any kind of payments of any type or information from you that could lead to them getting information to get payments from you or anything like that that's a scam that's a red flag don't contact those people don't respond to them if it's actually from us we are very official and we do not ask for credit card numbers we do not ask for bank routing numbers or nothing like that we don't ask for any financial information from you because it's none of our business anyways let's get into the questions here what do you think the next truck you and Reagan will buy to keep personally will be drivers garage commented he said definitely wants to find and keep a crew cab second gen lol yeah um you know honestly what we want to buy to keep for a while is going to be more along the lines of a fourth or fifth gen. And the reason for that is the four doors would just be amazing. It's not like a need, you know, we have one kid right now, so it's not, it's not like you can't make like nasty red work or you can't make, you know, my grandpa's old truck there work. Like, it's fine. It's just a luxury since there's an option out there, you know, I guess in the human mind you think since there's something more comfortable, there's something better out there, I would like to have that. You know, it's just where our minds go naturally, so four-door would be great, and that's probably the route we would go. Somebody said, will you ever do another gas or giveaway or budget build, as I called it, like I did with the OBS Chevy? And honestly, I don't know. I only did that because I bought that truck for the lawn care company. I actually did a small project on it, not necessarily to give away. I just did a small project on it because I was bored, and I'm like, you know what? This truck's just going to sit here all winter. Let's just do a small project with it. And then, you know, it'll it'll still be fine for a work truck in the summer for the lawn care business. Long story short, I ended up wrapping up the lawn care business and just deciding to give away that truck instead because I'm like, you know what, let's do it, whatever. If I sell it, you know, on Facebook at the time for the market on that truck, it was a $4,000 truck that I had like six, $7,000 into. And I was like, I might as well just give it away to somebody because I'm not going to get my money back anyways. And even if the giveaway for that truck sucks, who cares, somebody will get a cool truck and if they want it they'll enter for it if they don't want it they won't enter for it so that's the way I saw it and I don't know if I'll do another one of those it was cool you know because it was relatable to a lot of a lot of younger guys getting their first pickup um, or even you know just a side small project that they just want to put some miles on or run through the winter or as a weekend toy or something so you know I think a lot of people like that project because it was so reasonably priced you know start to finish and it's a really reliable platform I mean it's a they're a great trucks. so I don't yeah I just I don't think I'll do another one anytime soon. If I do another budget build, it'll probably be like with a diesel, like a two wheel drive or something and have some fun with it. We'll have to wait and see. Somebody said, why does Rosie not get driven? Well, she actually does get driven. Reagan's actually driven this truck quite a bit recently. I mean, we haven't always gotten it on video. And I guess if it's not on video, it doesn't happen, I guess, in the YouTube world because we try to film a lot of stuff. She has driven this truck. I want to say this month, she's probably driven it. Well, I guess it's January. She's only driven it once in January so far, but in December she drove it probably four or five times. And that's, so basically like once a week the thing gets driven. And this truck isn't really a, it's not, it's not a comfortable daily driver. Like it's, it's 
comfortable to drive, but it's just lifted so high. Like, so getting Marshall in and out, groceries in and out of the truck, I mean, it's just a lot. I mean, it's just a big truck. So it's just not the most functional day-to-day -day vehicle, but it has been getting driven a little more recently than it used to because it sat pretty much since I got the whole front end redone and the rush-free fenders and paint match and all that stuff for her birthday, it pretty much didn't get driven for like four months. She has been driving it a little bit more now. How come you never do a quality lift kit on any of your second gens like a Carly kit or AFC Live on any of your 12 valves? I don't really know how to respond to that. I know that there's guys that they do like these crazy, crazy second gen builds and third gen builds and whatever else, like on some older trucks and you know, they'll put $20,000 just into suspension on their truck and that's their baby. That's cool if that's you. But I'll be honest with you guys, like for the stuff that we do, we try to the best that we can give away trucks that are daily drivable for guys to just hop in, pull a trailer, just drive back and forth to work, work on the farm or whatever. Putting, you know, a four, five, six to ten thousand dollar suspension setup on one of these, you know, trucks that are only worth, you know, fifteen to twenty thousand dollars in today's market, to me it just it just seems crazy. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it'd be super cool, but I don't think from a business aspect, and you have to think about it from my perspective as well, which is the business aspect of it, because if the giveaways don't turn any profit, then we can't do them. I mean, we have to stop and we have to just move on to something else. I don't know what all those suspension kits run. I guess it depends whether you're going level, small lift, huge lift, what all you know you have custom done but i just don't see how spending five to ten thousand dollars on a crazy suspension setup on a second gen dodge or a first gen dodge is going to bring in you know twice that amount in sales to make it worth it because for example if we spend five thousand dollars on suspension for a truck it has to make ten thousand more dollars in sales just to make no money that's just to cover the cost of the kit and that extra cost that's not making any profit if we make 10,000 more in sales off of spending $5,000 on the parts to do that. So you see what I mean? So I don't know how I would be able to justify it. Like on an older truck like that, I just don't know if that's like something that's really drawing people in to enter to win that truck. Maybe that's just me, maybe that's just my only opinion and everybody's gonna comment and say, no, that's not true. We would buy 10 times the merch if you put a $5,000 suspension setup on an old Dodge. Maybe you would, I don't know. For me personally, I would look at that as most of these guys I mean, if they're hating on deep dish wheels and they're like, oh my gosh, go old school wheels, which is like half the comments under my videos is like, if they see a 20 or 22 inch rim, they're like, oh my gosh, there's too much rim, not enough tire. I feel like that group of people are not gonna be the type of people that's like, I can't believe you didn't put a $5,000 suspension set up on that truck. I try to read my audience the best that I can and I try to give them a little bit of what they want back and forth. But when it comes to something that that's really not gonna change that much in terms of the performance of the truck, the daily usability of the truck, and people's interest in entering to win the truck. From a business perspective, kind of insane. Maybe that's just my mindset on it and that should change, I don't know. Will you do a third gen from bone stock to a total showstopper? That's a good question. I don't have like one in mind that I would do that with currently, but I'm sure at some point here that's something that I'd really like to do. Is something that's from stock to some slight suspension stuff, wheels and tires, some power, and just completely customized in terms of exterior and cosmetic appearance. I think it'd be sweet for sure. Somebody asked what motivated you to do truck giveaways. When I wanted to do giveaways at first, I was 17 years old. I was doing YouTube for a little over a year at that point with the truck channel and I had been doing YouTube a total of like two and a half-ish years between my outdoors channel and my truck channel. I was at that point in life where, you know, I've got my parents in my ear like, hey, you're gonna be 18 soon, you gotta you gotta kinda know what you're doing, like if the YouTube thing is not making enough money to move out, you gotta, you gotta figure that out. My parents are very much so like the type of people, they don't wanna raise like grown babies, they wanna raise like adults. It's just kinda been in our ears, you know, like, hey, when you're an adult, like, it's time to do adult things and, and leave the house. You know what I mean? Not in a bad way, just kind of like keeping us moving along, motivating us to figure something out and go. Long term, that's just better for you. And you grow up a little faster. I was like, man, I gotta do, I gotta find a way to make more money uh, because at the time YouTube was making like 20, 25,000 my first full year. I mean, it was enough as a 17 year old to like maintain a YouTube channel, but not enough to maintain an expensive truck YouTube channel and pay for housing and food and insurance on everything that I had. It just wouldn't work out at that point. You know, it was enough to cover like my truck insurance and fuel and 
basic stuff to run my channel, but not living expenses and all these other expenses that are associated with you being out. I was like, I gotta find a way to make more money. And I was selling merch at the time on my website, but it was very minimal and it was very small scale. It wasn't really much of anything. Like if I sold 20 t-shirts in a month, I was like, that was a good month. You know what I mean? And so I needed to find something else. And I started to do some small giveaways with like I did some light bar giveaways and then I did some cash giveaways and just some small stuff. I had probably 50,000 subscribers and I was averaging, you know, 10,000 views a video, 10, 15,000 views, depending on the video. And uh, I was like, you know what, maybe I can do a giveaway. And so I happened to find a clean 12 valve with, you know, relatively lower miles on it. And it was only like 8,000 bucks at the time. And that's back when you could buy clean 12 valves for 8,000 bucks. Those days are currently gone until further notice. But I would found that. I put like a $2,500 set of wheels and tires on it. And I did some other small things to it. I don't remember what all I did. I did some smaller stuff to it. And I was like, okay, this is it. This is, you know, we're going to, it's all in. This is all the money, half the money that I've made in the past year that I had been saving that I didn't need to spend. And my little merch sales and stuff, I put it all in. My eggs were all in one basket get here with this with this giveaway 12 valve legal fees that were thousands of dollars and I'm just risking it all right here this could either just hardly break even or lose money or it could you know be successful but I I hadn't known because I'd never given anything away that big before and at the time there wasn't really many people doing it there was diesel brothers and that was it there was nobody else giving away trucks I mean there were like tons of car giveaway companies and stuff that I didn't know about at the time but the only other people giving away trucks at the time was Diesel Brothers, and I was like, well, they're doing it, you know, why can't I do it? But my brain was just thinking that, but I wasn't realizing, thinking like, okay, well, they do have millions of people that watch them on, like, TV and all this other stuff, too, so maybe it is a little different. You know, I just went for it, dude, and uh, it was, it worked out, you know, the first one worked out, second one worked out, third one was like a little bit, you know, a little bit risky. It's when I think I was putting my Longhorn up for grabs, and then uh, the winner ended up choosing a mint condition first gen that I had. It was between a Longhorn and a first gen, and I was like, okay, so whew, that one made money then because he didn't choose some more expensive truck. If he would have, you know, the truck was paid for, he would have gotten the truck, but it just, you know, in terms of actual profit margins, it would have been a little bit rocky. But yeah, so then other than that, though, it's been, uh, it's been great, and that's how I got into it. And now, of course, there's truck giveaway companies everywhere some of them you know I'm you know I keep in touch with very periodically not as much as we used to before we started to do the same business and then things just get a little bit awkward and people don't really want to share too much about what's going on in their lives and with their business and just kind of how it is you know like when you're doing similar things as other people now all of a sudden your business talk comes to a very very minimal thing and it's kind of like we can kind of be friends, but we're competition, so like we're not gonna talk too much about that stuff. Which is kind of a bittersweet because I like having some, you know, allies in the YouTube community and some friends. When everybody's trying to do the same thing now, it's kind of like to lose some of that because now it's there's other priorities and there's other things kind of hindering being able to have a better relationship. That's kind of a little bit unfortunate, but you know, but that's how I that's how I got into it. That's what made me want to start doing it was the fact that I'm like, I gotta find a way to make some more money. And it was either if this works out, cool, this is what I'm gonna try to do uh, as a career to get started to get out of this place and uh, get out on my own and make enough money to be able to do that. But you know, at the time it was a very it was a very innocent thing in terms of like just me wanting to make a decent living to be able to keep doing what I like doing, which was a YouTube thing. It wasn't like, oh, I'm gonna do this to get rich and try to like be better than everybody else. Like that was never, that was never my mindset when I got started with it. There's some, you know, brands out there that they just pride themselves on being better than everybody else. And you know, everything they do is just better and they're just the best and they're the best. And they're just like, like super egotistical. It's like, okay, just chill a little bit. For me, it was just, I wanted to do something to try to make this a more legitimate career that could be sustainable and that's really the only reason I got into it and I still do my stuff because I enjoy it not just because I'm just like oh, I just want to be better than everybody else like I just want to be good for me I want to do good for me and my family and if I'm doing that I'm happy with it I'm not like putting my happiness and trying to outdo everybody else that doesn't bring me happiness just doing a good job and making somebody happy when they win a truck and me being able to create a living at the same time that brings me joy, that brings me happiness. And if you don't just decide that, you're gonna be unhappy. I mean, it just, it doesn't it doesn't work long-term. That's all I'm gonna say. Probably the longest answer. But anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you liked the new tires on the King Ranch. If you wanna get entered to win Nasty Red 
plus a commercial grade western snowplow and five thousand dollars cash the giveaway for this truck ends tomorrow and then it is over so if you want to get in you've got to get in it ends on january 7th at 11 59 p.m eastern time just so excited so thankful for all of you guys and uh, i'll see you in the next video peace